Welcome back to another episode of From the Stands podcast. We hope everybody enjoyed the holidays. We are going to be out a day late um, on this episode just because of the holidays. The boys are spending some time with family, so we are recording this on a Thursday, going to put it out on a Friday, but we are back, and there was a lot, honestly, that happened over the weekend, over the holidays. For sure. For sure. There was some uh, stuff that we did not anticipate happening the way that it happened, but it happened. And Broncos country, <laughs> let's cry. <laughs> <laughs> That's a new one. I haven't heard that one yet. So we're going to hop right into Mega Moments of the Week. I feel like there was a lot to choose from this weekend. There was a lot of good things that happened in the sports world. Um, and I will start. My Mega Moment of the Week is Amari Cooper. It had to be for me, and I'll give you guys a couple reasons why to start with. 11 catches, 265 yards, and two TDs. Averaged 24.6 yards per reception on Sunday, which is just absolutely insane. Him and Joe Cool, that um, they have already blended so well together. They've got great chemistry, and they're showing it. Showed it with a 75-yard touchdown on Sunday. Amari Cooper, 51 and a half fantasy points, one of the greatest fantasy performances of all time. Part of the reason why it was such a mega moment for me was because that 51 and a half points helped the FTS squad. Secure the W. Let's Se- give it a golf clap. Secure the W in the first ever FTS Fantasy League. It sent us to the championship, so it won us our semifinal game. Um, shout out to Team Campbell. Tough week, dude. I, You know, if you're watching this, you put up a good fight. 11-3 and three in the regular season. There was no reason we should have won that game, but Amari Cooper and Joe Cool helped us do such. So... Little quick round of applause for Team Campbell and Mike Evans and Mike Evans. Mike Evans was large there, but in my opinion, Amari Cooper had the best day out of anybody in the NFL this weekend, and of course, helping us win that that fantasy league matchup definitely played into the fact of him being my mega moment of the week. For sure, mine <clears throat> mine is just the feel good story of the weekend in the NFL. The Detroit Lions getting the job <laughs> done against the Vikings. And winning the first division title since 1993. 30 years, baby. It's their first ever NFC North title. The Not last time. The la- longer than 30 years. <laughs> the last time they won their division, it was called the NFC Central, which no longer exists. Was it really? Uh-huh. I didn't mm-hmm. realize they had never won the North. Well, you got Favre and you got Rodgers and you got Rodgers on the Vikings. Or not Rodgers, I mean Favre on the Vikings. And then Cousins, Cousins yeah. Culpepper. Yeah, a couple of years of he had one Trubisky year. And yeah, I forgot about yeah. that. Trubisky Orlovsky year. didn't really help. And <laughs> uh, I mean, that was just a Jay tough. Cutler back in the day. Smoking Chad. Jay. But yeah, unless you're a Vikings fan or a Bears fan or a Packers fan, you feel like you have to, a little bit, root for the Lions a little bit and just, they're, they're making the playoffs. They won the division. I couldn't, I mean, I was 13 years old when they last made the playoffs. No. They 2016. Made it. You were 13 in 2016? Uh-huh. Shit, I was 14. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's the last time they made it. Yeah, that is. Yeah, yeah I was thinking too. And well. I'm almost 21 now, so a little golf clap for the Detroit Lions. And that's my mega moment of the week. Go Lions. Jaquavius. All right, my mega moment of the week was one that I wasn't exactly anticipating, but it was the Raiders knocking off the Chiefs <laughs> in Arrowhead <laughs> in a divisional game. On Christmas Day. On Christmas Day. Um, obviously it's not as important as it would have been had the Broncos been continuing their climb. Now they're obviously, they've come back to earth. So it's not as important to the division. The Chiefs look like they still have it locked Locked up. up. Um, but Aiden O'Connell became the first rookie quarterback to beat Patrick Mahomes, which was, wasn't expecting it to be Aiden O'Connell. Wasn't expecting him to not throw a pass after, uh, not complete a pass after the first quarter yeah that w- no josh jacobs and them still in that game hey you know who it was zeus. zeus that's right that's right so zeus gets a mini mega moment from us um but uh it's also one of the few divisional games patrick mahomes has ever lost in general like i think he's only lost two or three yeah he does not lose does to not the lose. afc west does not lose he it's the first time the raiders beat the chiefs since 2020 i remember that game um but I, that's my mega moment is Good for the Raiders. The Raiders are still technically, statistically, in contention to make the playoffs. Huge win for Antonio Pierce, too. Yeah, I think I think this win probably cements him as to getting... I think it has job. to, right? You can't... 
can you really go back and have another rich moment? Mm -mm. I don't think you can afford that. The, your last three coaches before that were John Gruden, Jack Del Rio, Jack Del Rio for one season, who went eight and eight and then got fired, and Art Shell, yeah. I believe was his name. Who was their coach that year that they went? Derek Carr had the really good season. They went to the playoffs, but Derek Carr got hurt. Was that that might have been that might have been the rich year when Gruden got fired. Uh, I thought oh. it was for Gruden. Yeah, that, that was the Falcons year. The Falcons, I think that was the Falcons Patriots year. That would have been 2016. That would have been a long time ago. Oh, okay. Which could have been possible because Derek Carr would have been two years into his career at that point. He was drafted in 14. Yeah, and he was definitely a better player at the start than he has been towards what I'm assuming is going to be the finish. But, so. yes, big mega moment for the Raiders. That was a huge win for them, huge win for Antonio Pierce. If nothing else, he has that team playing Raider football yes. hard nosed hard good defense good wrap D. up tackle <laughs> and a good run game i mean they're they're Down getting it the done throat. with they're getting it done with zeus <laughs> they're the 11 seed with the colts and broncos to play and they're only one game back if the chiefs lose their last two games and the raiders win their last two games the raiders win the division who are the chiefs playing the last two they play the Bengals and then they play i think the chargers oh, and they play the yeah. Bengals. In Arrowhead yeah. this weekend. Bengals, Chargers. That doesn't mean much anymore. Not I guess not. That team, you can definitely tell that Eric the Enemy was a large, large and part of that offense. I mean, losing Tyreek two years ago. Well, that was two years they ago. Won the they, they won the Super Bowl, Bowl last year. Well, I guess losing Juju. Was losing Juju deal. was really what I mean, would we thought that you were kind of going to have a Tom Brady situation with Patrick Mahomes. Like, you could just put... Anybody. anybody in there, and he was well, going to make it Brady happen. Brady always had a ton of talent as well, at, at, out in the outside at least. Edelman, yeah, I mean, I guess we're we're the talking old. slot guys. Yeah. We're normally the like the Edelmans and the um. That's the difference. Amendola needs, a, Wes Wes needs a little a little white guy, a little white slot guy. Get him like Hunter Renfro or something. I, I mean, I'm not going to put it all. He did not play well against the Raiders. Mahomes at yeah. all. There were a lot of drops. Still, I mean, you can only throw it to guys so many times, and it hit them in the hands. And it falls straight to the ground before you finally don't even want to throw it anymore. The the yeah, that's what I was saying. the problem with that is that he's losing confidence with each throw that's dropped, and you can't have a lack of confidence in the in the only people that are catching your footballs. The like, only people you throw to. Exactly. You mm -hmm. can't you can't have that lack of confidence going into the playoffs. So it's gonna be interesting. We but that's a see. that's a good mega moment and good for Antonio Pierce. Joe, what do we got? All right. You already see the jersey. You know where I'm going. I put on my Instagram story last week when it was announced Mason Rudolph was coming to save Christmas. Rudolph, Rudolph rides. And he did just that. He threw for 290 yards, two touchdowns, 124 passer rating. Better than any game I've ever watched Kenny Pickett play. <laughs> and just to preface this, games with more than two passing touchdowns in their career, Mason Rudolph has six of them in 11 starts. Kenny Pickett has one in 24 starts. So if they been, if they don't, if they don't fucking bench Kenny Pickett this week, if Kenny Pickett plays against the Seahawks, I am no longer a Steelers fan. You heard it for this first. season, for the, yeah. <laughs> until we get rid of Mike Tomlin, because he's his terrible coach. Until the nine and eight, the nine and eight record is on the line, then he kicks in the high <laughs> gear. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, Rudolph, truthfully, was never given a real shot. Like Kenny Pickett's given two years of complete below mediocrity. The dude came in for Ben in 2019. He wasn't the best, but he wasn't he wasn't as bad as Kenny. He got benched for fucking Duck Hodges. Then he came back after Duck Hodges had his one Tommy DeVito moment, and he gets fucking boinked boink over the head by Miles Garrett, and he's out with a concussion. And then they're like, you know what? We're going to sit you behind Mitch the Bitch Trubisky, because <laughs> that makes sense. Mitch Trubisky's probably the worst quarterback in the NFL. I listened to somebody do a, uh, a video the other day naming 73 quarterbacks they'd rather have over Mitch Trubisky. <laughs> he listed 73 in like 60 seconds. I can name even call it. I'd rather, I'd rather have fucking Carson Beck over Mitch Trubisky. Mitch, Mitch Trubisky crazy too, throws off his back foot all the time. He can't read a defense. He's a terrible quarterback. One of the biggest busts of all time. One of. One of. But Mason Rudolph, nonetheless, is my mega moment. It's a solid mega moment, and it puts your Steelers in position to have yet another 9-8 and eight season. The standard is the standard. <laughs> <laughs> it's a standard for damn sure. It just might not be the one that you're hoping for. All right. So as always, as we always do in this podcast, with the good, you always get the bad. With the pretty, there is the ugly. With the great moments, there are the bad moments, and that is what we are going to touch on here, those mid 
moments. I'm going to start, and I'm going to go somewhere that most people would probably not go after their team has won this week, but I'm going to the Falcons. And hold on, I'll tell you why. The Falcons have had one of the most disappointing up and down seasons that I have watched as a Falcons fan since I have been alive and cognizant enough to watch a game and understand what is going on. The talent that you possess on the field is so much better than a 7-8 and eight team. There is too much talent on the offensive side of the ball for you to week in and week out go from scoring 7 points to scoring 29 points. And this weekend, we'll probably score 13 points against the Bears. That's number one. Number two, you have your best defense that you have had since the Super Bowl. And you've got guys like Nate Landman. 28-3 Super Bowl. <laughs> <laughs> you've got guys like Nate Landman. You've got guys like Caden Ellis. You've got guys like Richie Grant. All third, fourth, fifth round draft picks playing at a high level of football. You have the best free agent signing in Atlanta Falcons history and Jesse Bates right now, who is playing at an all-pro level at the safety position. You've got A.J. Terrell, you, who is one of the better corners in the league. In my opinion, a premier corner. Now, obviously, Probably I'm top 15. A, He's I'm top best, 32. That's what sure. I was going to say, top 15. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely top two on the team. Uh, yeah, for sure. He's top 15 in the league, yeah. which is all we've asked of him this year. I mean, in his rookie season, people were talking about him being like the next Jalen Ramsey. He's taken a little bit of a step back, but he's still playing really good football, and we're getting enough out of some guys on the defensive line to win football games, right? With all the injuries that we have had on the offensive line, you lose or the defensive line, you lose Grady Jarrett, you go out, you get Contavious Street to kind of fill in that position. Obviously not going to play as well as Grady, but you go and get somebody, he's out. Uh, one, one guy that I will highlight real quick, Zach Harrison, third or fourth round pick from last year, had all the physical attributes to be a great defensive end in the league, just didn't have it up here. Now has recorded at least half a sack in three straight games, I believe. So he's finally starting to come around. He's playing some good ball. You've got the defense. You've got a top 10 defense. You've got the weapons on offense. Three top 10 picks in the last three years spent on offensive skill positions. The problem is you have one of the most stubborn head coaches in all of football. I would love to see Arthur Smith and Mike Tomlin argue a wall about why they choose to coach the way they do and why they will not adapt to today's game. Put you Bill put, Belichick in there, too. He don't adapt to nothing. You put Taylor Heineke in the game this, this week, albeit not a franchise guy, right? But you traded for him in the offseason. He's got experience. He's got playoff experience. He almost beat Tom Brady in the playoffs. He can make plays. He can read a defense, and he is less turnover prone than Desmond Ritter. But your stubborn ass decides to start Ritter all season, even when Taylor Heineke comes in and almost gets you a comeback win against the Titans, right? He hurts his hamstring the next week. He's got to sit, and then you decide to lose a, a divisional game to the Bucks, in which you come all the way back 25, 22, and then your defense collapses and gives up a last-second touchdown. Okay, whatever. Then you go on to lose against the one, at the time, the one-win Panthers. All you needed to do was win that game, and you were still in the playoffs. You're still in the playoffs. No, you go, we're going to lose, but then we're going to go the next week and play the 8-7, and seven, or 8 and, they were 8-6. and six. Yeah. The 8-6 and six Colts, who were in playoff contention, in contention to win the, divi the division still. And you go, huh, we're going to figure it out today. We're going to put up 29. It is just the most wishy-washy team I've ever seen, and it comes down to three things a stubborn owner in Arthur Blank, a stubborn head coach in Arthur Smith, and a trash can that has been calling the plays for us all season in Desmond Ritter. And it's just really irritating to watch because for a team that should be in win-now mode, to sit there and try to ride out Desmond Ritter all season, a third-round pick, somebody who literally only got drafted because he had the physical gifts, right? Nothing up here said Desmond Ritter should be drafted. And you just you leave them in with all the turnover issues, and you squander one of your best chances to win the division since that 2016 season. In the last two weeks against, or in the last three weeks, with two division losses, when you had the lead and then you lose to a one-win team, it's just 
It is beyond me, and that is why the Atlanta Falcons as a whole and their season as a whole is going to be a mid-moment for me this week. Sounded like it was a pretty mid-moment. I don't have any stake in mine, but mine's the Denver Broncos. Starting off with a not great contract for from Russ when they picked him up. We'll and get into that more later too. One of I don't I can't tell you another time I've heard somebody trade for a head coach. Uh, that's happened before. Bill Belichick. Uh, uh, when he was with the when he was he was with the Browns. I think it was the Jets. The Jets for a day. Jets, yeah. Trading for a head coach is crazy to me, though. And then being the laughing stock of the NFL at the beginning of the season, getting beat by 50, giving up 70, yeah. and then coming all the way back, going 6-2 and two through eight games, giving yourself a chance, and then shit in the bed against the Patriots and letting the worst kicker in the NFL kick a 56-yarder. And then... The guy who's brought you all the way back, Russell. Wood, eh, he, we're gonna we're gonna get rid of him. He's he's the problem, dude. I, he he fucking. I think Sean Payton has like a deep deep hatred for that. Have you seen him on the side? <laughs> he has a, yes. For some reason, he had a vendetta against Russell Wilson when he landed in Denver. He hasn't liked that dude since he bought his plane ticket to fly out there. I'm not saying none of the blame is on Russ. Some of it is, but I don't think the majority is on Russ. I think Sean Payton is trying to retain his somewhat decent image, and they're trying to make Russ the scapegoat and just get rid of him and think that it'll solve all their problems if we just get rid of Russ. But 26 TDs and eight picks this year. I mean, that's a compared to the quarterback play across the league. Mahomes has what, 26 and 17? Something like that. Yeah, his turnovers are ridiculous right now. Twenty six and fourteen. Fourteen. So but yeah, just the 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 complete lack of, I would say respect, and just the the way that the Denver Broncos have handled this season and their team is what makes this a mid moment for me. Russell Wilson is the the Dylan Brooks of this year. <laughs> the scapegoat. The scapegoat. Next week on the sideline, you'll just <laughs> yeah. Right behind Jarrett Stidham. I wouldn't show up to the game if I was him, but that's just me. All right. Well, mid moment. <laughs> you know, little time. round of applause for the new record broken moves. record. You know what time it is? It's time to talk about the Detroit Pistons. Um, they just hit twenty seven games in a row. Twenty seven. What when we started this? What was it at? Fourteen. Somewhere, Somewhere in the day, teens. Yeah. Somewhere in the low, low teens. Um. <clears throat> 27 games in a row that they have lost now. Um, they now have the record for the single season streak of most losses in a row and are two games away from the all-time record of most losses in a row that it can extend over multiple seasons. Um, Not only that, Cade Cunningham in his last five is averaging 31.8. In the last five games, there are two players in the NBA that are averaging more points per game. The MVP front runner in Joel Embiid, who's averaging like 35 a game right now on the season. Mm -hmm. And then Luka Doncic, who is one of the league's premier scorers. Cade is doing all that he can. On the season, he's averaging 23-7-4 and and a steal. So he's doing everything that he possibly can to... The fact that he's averaging seven assists to the bums on that team. To the bums <laughs> on on that who that else is scoring? I mean, it's Bo- Bogey's the only guy who's been able to score. Bogdanovich is the only guy who's been able to and score. And he's just a seasoned vet. And so they have, as I've said for the last three weeks, zero spacing. They have absolutely no spacing whatsoever. They have one player averaging over 33% from three that shoots more than three a game. So I'm not counting guys who shoot one a game because that's small only shot, sample They've only shot 33s on the season. They have one guy who's sh- shooting over 33%, shooting more than three threes a game, and that's Bogdanovich. He's the only guy. Um, not even K- Cade is the next up. He's shooting 32.9%. Uh, it's tough to have a good field goal percentage too when you're having to take half your team's shots. It's he's the only reason they have any spacing and any capabilities from beyond the arc. Otherwise, it's just it's just run and dunk. The worst run part is, I, and I've listened to Chuck talk about it, Shaq talk about it, uh, Ernie talk about it. The team should Michael Wilbon talk about it. The team should not be that bad. No, they they have a lot more talent than any of the other twenty-seven there is losses. No reason that they should now hold the streak for 
most consecutive losses in a single season. I don't, and the worst part is you you look at the team and like I mean obviously the spacing is bad, but you can't figure out what the real issue is. Is it Monty Williams? Is it the front office? Is it guys not playing up to potential? Is it that the league is just super talented? Like you can't pick out other than the spacing. Mm-hmm. You can't look at that team and find the one thing that is causing them to have a historic losing streak. Yeah, it's just today's day and age you have to be able to shoot the three effectively and they can't. They they just it's and they they go out and draft Ivy 2 years ago who's supposed to be solid but he's been pretty he's been okay he's they just been, refuse to start him now they will start oh, he comes off the bench because killian hayes starts <laughs> they only start they were and they also drafted asar thompson this year who is historically bad at at shooting the three ball um but if they lose the next two they tie the record for all time well they have boston this week <laughs> yeah they, they have, have boston uh tonight and they have the toronto Raptors. 12 and 18 toronto that is their only chance after boston tonight they have Toronto, Houston. They've got the best. They've got their best three game stretch in terms of breaking. Even the Golden street. State. Even Golden State's not very good right now. I don't see Curry is not going to let the if if it gets to the Warriors and they're on like a thirty. How many more games they got till they play Golden State? Four. 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 If they're on a thirty one game winning streak, Curry will drop fifty seven before he lets the Warriors be the team that the streak is broken against. I think it's going to be Utah. I would bet my money on Utah. If it's not Utah, it has to be San Antonio. Yeah, yeah. but that means they're going to be on a 34-game, 34-35-game yeah. losing streak. Right. And the guy I feel the worst for is Cade Cunningham. Yeah. And he's kind of like the only guy that's sticking up for the team. Yeah, he's still he's kept, the the, only he's team, kept he's, a leadership role, He's the too. only guy that's like, we're not that bad. There's no way. <laughs> and like, yeah. we're just trying to keep the... We're just trying to stay afloat. <laughs> yeah, it's so, sad. We'll see you next week for another. Detroit my mega moment should have been Wingstop. Wingstop. Wingstop this, stock dude, is they through are, the roof. Oh my gosh, they have. Uh, whoever came up with that promotion should have got a fat raise. Yeah, should have got a fat raise because that is just one of the all-time promotions I have ever seen. Greatest fleece and Wingstop. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny because you still have to buy wings to get the free ones. Yep. And really? Yeah. Yes. That's smart <laughs> business right there. Yeah, it is. Rick Ross is eating all the extra wings himself. Fat boy needs a 10 piece. <laughs> lemon, lemon, <laughs> he needs more than that. Lemon pepper step. Send James Harden to Detroit. Oh, <laughs> there's no clubs in Detroit like that. No, nah, send Cade Cunningham to the Lakers. The GM. Can you imagine if the Lakers won both championships this year? It'd would, be the greatest season greatest in season NBA ever. history. Yeah. Have to be. Have better to be. than 73 9. Well, way better than 72 10. Well, the Cavs that year already stole that crown from them when they so LeBron won. Has they won too. Yeah, Sorry, they wanted that legacy. They should have won the chip, but he really looked goat. How bad does the back of your throat hurt? Not go, that it bad. It goes way past his throat. He, you know, <laughs> LeBron packing. <laughs> I mean, I have never, I have never seen somebody so willingly let another grown man put his hand on the back of his head and just. Hold it down. This is a family friendly did you podcast. See, did you see what he posted? I he can't po- believe you can breathe. Did you see what LeBron posted? No. No. He posted that video of that lady going, That motherfucker. He's gonna blow my cover. And then he posted all his fucking stats. That was the corniest shit I've fucking ever seen in my life. Bro. Don't poke the bear. It's still the dumbest shit I've ever seen posted ever. What's their record? They slide in a little bit. What is their record? Like, Not very towards good. the table a little bit. No, I don't know. But for my mid moment, we already kind of touched on the game. But it's the Kansas City Chiefs. Patrick Mahomes, crybaby Mahomes. Crybaby Kelsey. He had a Kenny Pickett game. 235 yards, one touchdown, one pick. One fumble lost. Yeah. <laughs> Two turnovers. Travis Kelsey, all seasons be getting clamped up. Taylor Swift, she might be sucking some other things, but she sucked <laughs> the talent. <laughs> she sucked the talent right out of that motherfucker. They have a good defense, but their offense is clearly not the same. As it's been since Mom's got there. Fun fact: in the first five years, 2018 and 2022 of Mahomes, how many times do you think their offense was held to under 20 points? In the f- five first years, five years of his career, yeah, twice under 20 points, yeah, six times, probably in between two and six. Six. How many times do you think it's happened this season? Faux. Seven. <laughs> oh what? my goodness! Yeah, seven times this season they've been held under 20 points. Holy shit! 
if that's not Eric Bieniemy's case for getting a head coaching job this year, I don't know what. Or it you is. know, don't hire fucking bum ass Matt Nagy to run your offense. I saw a meme about that the other day, and it was like Matt Nagy standing in the background of Patrick Mahomes, and it was like, "What do you need to ruin a quarterback?" And it was just Matt Nagy kind of like chilling out behind. I don't know home. what it is with Matt's Matt Nagy, Matt Canada. Just don't hire the motherfuckers. Mm. But yeah. get, Matt Patricia. <laughs> yeah, Matt Patricia. <laughs> <laughs> do not hire a Matt. Yeah, but the Chiefs, they're looking rough. That they're part of my hot take as well. So, but we'll get there in a few minutes. But the Chiefs are my mid moment of the week. You think solid mid You think Taylor Swift is just doing this whole thing as a scheme to make herself more money? Because if no, I think the NFL hired her to do it. Well, if you think about it, if they get together, Travis Kelsey sucks. He realizes he sucks. He's got to break up with her. She makes a song about him. She makes billions. Yeah. She's already making billions though. Yeah, she is. She don't need no more. But money. the NFL is trying to connect to a younger audience, and what better way to do it than one that all the young women, women. watch or listen to? Yeah, it I fills mean, the stadiums every time she's there. Every single time. And it's all anybody can... Like, I didn't see it so much in the beginning as much as y'all did, but now I'm like, holy shit, is this a Taylor Swift concert or is this a football game? What are we doing? Now you understand what Al Michaels was talking about? You can't make the side show the main show. Mm-hmm. <laughs> hey, Lance cannot stand listening to that man commentate those so i he, hate listening to al michaels he was so, i was like hey so you might not like why he got taken off of nfl playoff game broadcasting this year i was like but at least he did yeah what so did he do he talked about he, he talked, talked about taylor about swift taylor at swift. one of the games they like panned to her and he was like come oh. on guys we can't make the side show the main show oh really and mm-hmm. that's why they took him off they took him yeah. off of he will are not you fucking, are you fucking kidding me he will not maybe be allowed they, maybe to, they did pay he was pay. supposed to be on an nbc playoff game this he this will year. not be allowed That's to commentate fucked. any playoff games this year. I mean, Lance was happy, but again, it was kind of Oh, my was really for the people. <laughs> really for the people. Not during the games. <laughs> it can't be worse than Collins. Where did you see? Dude. I who, mean, was it, dude who was Chris it that made Col- the throw? He was like, as long as it's up. not a Mahomes, Mahomes game. Mahomes. I would... No, it was Stafford. It was Stafford? I think he said Stafford. that. The motherfucker said that. That looked a little Mahomey. I'd rather listen to yeah, like Stafford since college. Yeah, Stafford's been doing that shit before Mahomes even thought about being an NFL quarterback. So was so was Aaron Rodgers. Big Ben. Big Ben had the best pump fake and no look pass, but they never covered him because of the allegations. Was it really allegations? Yeah, was it allegations? I feel. Like <laughs> <laughs> I feel like we cleared up the it. settlement. <laughs> <laughs> I would rather listen to that though than Al Michaels on a fifty-five yard touchdown. Oh, and the deep ball throw. Oh, and what an amazing catch! And he strolls into the end zone. Your feelings about Al Michaels are my same feelings about Joe Buck. I can't fucking stand listening Al to Al Michaels, Joe, Joe Buck. Buck, Super Bowl. Dude. Make it happen. Oh I wouldn't gosh. watch. I would not watch. <laughs> if I did watch, it would be on mute, and I'm n- I shit you not. Listening to Joe Buck call an important game is like watching paint dry. Game. I can't wait for Tom Brady to start commentating. I feel like he's going to be the Dude, goat. I cannot wait to hear him commentate. Put him and... Uh, Rony Tomo. Yeah, put him and Tony Romo together, dude. Put him and get, Greg Olson. get Breeze in the game. Tom Brady Brady and Greg Olson would be a... Oh, dude, Breeze and Brady would be iconic. I wish Peyton... I mean, obviously, he's got the Monday Night Football thing, but I wish he would get more into commentating because Peyton and Brady as a commentating duo would be all-time. Absolutely all-time. That would be one of my favorite... I would watch whatever game they were commentating, even if it was the 2-12 and Panthers against the 3 or 4... Oh, they got four wins now. I'm sorry. The 4 and... uh, are they four and twelve or four and eleven Patriots? Four and twelve, four and whatever. 12. I would watch them anytime. All right, some good mega moments, some good mid moments. Now we got to get to the stove. We got to see what's cooking with these hot takes. And I know we all got some. I'm gonna start with mine, and it's kind of gonna piggyback on Lance's mid moment of the week. You're gonna have to bear with me. My hot take of the week is that Russell Wilson's five year. $242.6 million extension inked before the start of the 2022 NFL season is the current worst contract in NFL history. Now, you have Deshaun's contract, which we'll get to probably in the coming months or in the coming years, but that contract really hasn't came to fruition in terms of screwing over the Browns yet. It doesn't, like, they're a playoff team this year. They're going to go to the playoffs Next year, they're still going to have that defense. They're going to get Nick Chubb back. Like, that team can still contend. The Broncos cannot. Not only can can they not, 
if, first off, let's start here. Yes, the way the Broncos are handling this right now is not good at all. It's not fair to Russ. It's not a good look on the organization. From the top down, this is being handled wrong. But since arriving in Denver, Russ has thrown for 300 yards. How many times do you guys think? Four or five times. Three times? Three Three times. And one of those was the blowout loss to the Dolphins. Mm -hmm. So in meaningful games, he has thrown for 300 yards twice since arriving in Denver. They won four games last year. Absolutely abysmal. You get Russ and everybody's like, holy shit, the, the Broncos are a Super Bowl contender last year. Right? They win four games. They win four games last year. He throws for 16 TDs and almost as many picks with 11. Very inefficient. Could not get the ball downfield. Was not making plays. Was not the Seattle rush that we were all used to seeing. This year, he comes back, right? He's playing much better ball. And we just talked about it. 26 TDs to eight interceptions. He's been more efficient. He's finding his guys. He's making plays. Unfortunately, for whatever reason, he has still been unable to make the big plays and the big moments to win them football games. He's had a few, but he just hasn't done enough, especially not enough for the $242 million price tag that was placed on a 32-year-old quarterback when he landed in Denver. On the Broncos' end, if released now or whenever before June 1st next year, 80 Five million dollars in dead cap. Eighty-five million dollars in dead cap spread out over the next two seasons. It'll be the largest dead cap hit by like double in NFL history, with two, with three of those being Aaron Rodgers, Matt Ryan, and Julio Jones. It would be absolutely insane. Not only would it be, it would be only over the next two seasons. That puts the Broncos on the hook for thirty-five point four million dollars next season. And $49.6 million in dead cap in 2025, leaving the Broncos with very few options to replace the once Super Bowl winning signal caller. So not only are they handling it poorly as a organization, in my opinion, it is the current worst contract in NFL history. Now, if you if you gave Russ next year and you pay him the $40 million, Maybe he comes out and maybe, you know, he's playing with that chip on his shoulder. Maybe he takes you to to the playoffs. Maybe he takes you to the AFC championship. But if you release him before this June 1st and you can't find a trade partner and you've got to take that hit on cap, it will be the worst contract in NFL history. And it won't even be close, in my opinion. Follow that up with the fact that they will have pretty much no money to go and spend on an already thin free agent QB class, the Broncos are going to, they look like they were doing this in the last eight games. They will fucking fall off a cliff over the next three seasons with a dead cap hit that Russell Wilson is going to take. I don't know why they announced they were going to release him. They just lost all trade. Leverage. Leverage. They probably already tested the waters, though. Nobody wants to touch that contract. They were, even if, even if they traded him, $68 $68 million still in dead cap. Unless they got somebody to pick up his $22 million option, bonus option, in which that team would owe Russ $54 million for next season. I feel like the Falcons make so much sense now that I think about it. We all do we say that they have a great roster, top to bottom, except for the quarterback. That's the only thing they're missing. They're missing one piece to be in contention. I don't want Russ. I don't want that contract. It sets your team back. Yeah, I mean, you would you would be selling out for win now. There's only one team out. I think in recent memory that that's worked for. And it's the Rams. Yeah, every I mean, if you look at the Browns, you look at the Broncos. But I think you're going to be looking at the Panthers in a couple of years. Every team the I think they would have been the same or better with their old. Like I think the Broncos would be the same with Mr. Horsecock Lock as they are with Russ. I think the Browns would be better with Baker than if they had Deshaun starting. I mean, they're better with Joe Flacco. I think the Panthers would be better just waiting and drafting whoever they would draft this year. Because they still if they had, had a pick. Yeah, if they didn't trade for... Because they still had a top 10 pick last year. They were number two? Who, the, the Panthers? No. No, the Panthers were number one. Or they were number no, nine. They, they were, were number, number nine. nine. Okay. They went from nine to one. Yeah, I mean, the quarterback issue was still not the largest issue they needed to address. The Panthers? Yeah. 
They had a lot of issues. They had a lot of issues. But well, I I, like that's you, a laundry list. But so when you but, look at all those issues, it doesn't make any sense to me to trade your nine for the one and your first round pick in this upcoming draft, knowing and, that even with a generational talent, which I told everybody, uh, you can go back and watch episodes in, in March before the draft, that C.J. Stroud was the best quarterback in this class and that Bryce Young was not going to be it. Now, I can't say that he's a bust yet because we, I'm not going to jump all over him when he's been given one of the worst situations in the NFL he's this year. He's been good the last three weeks, too. And he has been better. But when you have that laundry list of issues, it doesn't make any sense to me to go trade all that draft capital to get your guy and put him in this shitty situation with no offensive line, no running backs, really. I, I knew Miles Sanders was bad before he ever landed in Carolina. Your number one wide receiver is how old is Thielen now? 33? 32? Like 33? You've got no uh, Hayden Hurst, no tight end. Thomas Reynolds. And your defense is the only calling card you currently have to win games. A top five defense, I believe, in yards per game allowed right now. But even they can't do anything. They're bottom 10 in the league in points allowed because they're constantly getting short fields, right? So, yeah, you can keep them from getting yards, but it's going to be hard to keep them from getting points. Um, so that was crazy to me. But, yeah, you're right. I mean, no team that has really sold out for a quarterback in recent memory has worked out. The Bucks. I don't want to go pick up. I want to sell out, though. Tom Brady signed, signed for a team-friendly contract and as a free agent. So that they could go out and pay – a bunch of other guys. They did trade for Gronk, but they got him for cheap because he wasn't going to come back and play for anyone else. No, he, they they only had to trade for him because he was still under contract with the Patriots, but the Patriots knew he was never going to play a game for them again. So they didn't really He's have He's going to pull a Lions situation. Yeah. <laughs> I'm retired. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and didn't have, uh, they didn't really have any, any leverage on that. But yes, that is my hot take of the week, that Russell Wilson's contract currently, sp- released or not released, Currently, to me, is the worst contract in NFL history. All right, mine. I'm switching over to the NBA for a second. After their hot start, you know, they were one of the most, not most, they were one of the hottest and most, like, likable teams early in the season. The Indiana Pacers, with Tyrese Halliburton having a great start to the season, you know, scoring a bunch of points, making a run in the in-season tournament. My hot take is that their defense kills their chances this year. They finish top, they finish bottom five in the East, and they miss the playoffs. They miss the playoffs. They don't even make the play-in. They don't make the play-in with the league's best offense. They have the second worst defense in the NBA. I was was reading a stat the other day about the Pacers. They've played how many games now? Like 20? They are 30. They're 15 and 14. They played 29 29. games. I, I was... Listening to something, it was a week ago. I don't know if it's changed now, but I think it was at the time they'd played 25 games. They'd played 25 games and allowed 26 30 point scores. They allow more 30 point scores than games played. And going forward, <clears throat> beginning of the year, they play Milwaukee twice back to back. They play Boston twice back to back. They play Denver a couple times in January. They play Phoenix. They play Philly. They play Phoenix again. They play Boston at the end of the month. I don't. Um, they don't. I don't disagree with you that the defense is going to be really hard for them to overcome, especially since it does seem like the league has taken it a little more seriously this year. The league is still not playing good defense as a whole. I mean, when you see 144 to 135 NBA games on a nightly basis, the league is not playing good defense, but it is playing more defense than they have in the past. The problem I see with that is. The bottom of the East is garbage. The bottom of the East is terrible. The Pistons are 2-28. and 28. The Wizards, not much better. They've won five games. They're 5-25. and 25. The Hornets, 7-21, and 21, and they ain't going nowhere. They're, they've lost eight straight. You've got the Hawks, who great offense, terrible defense. Their point differential right now is negative .5. They're 12-18. and 18. And then the Raptors, who also negative 1.3 point differential, 12 and 18. Then you've got the bottom two play-in teams right now, the Brooklyn Nets and the Chicago Bulls, really do not have anything going for them right now either. All from the ninth seed all the way down to the last place team in the East right now, they all have negative point differentials. 
while the Pacers is not by a large margin, they do have a .8 plus .8 point differential right now. They have the best offense in the Eastern Conference. I think it's going to be hard for them to fall all the way out of the play-in with how bad the bottom of the East is. I, I don't think Tyrese can carry them that far, and I don't think anyone else on their team is able to step up and help out, I guess is the term. Miles Turner is okay, but he's Great a great defender, not a prolific scorer. And then you have, after that, like Benedict Matherin. Mm-hmm. And then. Great scorer. Buddy, Bud, he, Buddy Heald. Buddy Heald. Do they still have Dougie McBuckets? <sighs> Dougie Dude, McBuckets. I don't know. I think they do. But I think if they continue that trend over an 82 game period of having a top three offense and a bottom three defense, I don't think it works. I think that bottom. I think that top offense in the league will be enough. I'm going to have to disagree. I think that if they can maintain being just a top three offense in basketball all season with how bad the bottom of the East is, I think they can at least make a 10 seed. I think they'll make the play in and lose to a team like the Hawks. If the Hawks are there. Uh, we are six games below 500 right now, and we are three and seven in our last 10. Um, the I mean we have the third, yeah, third best offense in the Eastern Conference right now, but we have the third worst defense in the Eastern Conference right now. So yeah. kind of the same way as the Pacers, except it has literally been the Trey Young show, and Dejounte decides to show up every now and then, and everybody else is just kind of like running like chickens with their head cut off around the floor. Uh, it's just going to be a tough scene to see my Hawks get back to playoff contention. Um, it'll, it'll be interesting for sure. I don't, I think I like the take. I just don't think anybody's playing enough defense this year with how bad the bottom of the East is to keep the league's current best offense out of at least the plan. Um, I just don't think the Pacers at any point in this season are a bottom five team in a terrible, terrible East right now, at least towards the bottom. Yeah. Jack, what do you got for us? My hot take is something that Joe's not going to like very much. But I better think not be some Steelers hate, man. Not some Steelers hate. Okay, worry. good. But it's some AFC North love. Um, I think fully healthy, the Browns are a top three team, without a doubt. Fully healthy. In the AFC or in the league? In the league. So, so when you when you say fully healthy, you mean with Deshaun at quarterback? Everybody's healthy. No, yes. Deshaun fully Deshaun fully healthy. This Deshaun year was not Deshaun worse. healthy. This year Deshaun was never healthy. Deshaun has not been healthy. This okay, but year. let's talk about this season. Do you apply that to the end of this season right now? If nobody else gets hurt, what do you mean? Are they a top three team in football right now? No. So you're saying like looking forward to next season. I'm saying if they played this season with every single player healthy, if they played this previous season, start of the season to end of the season, they didn't lose the guys that they lost. Because teams have injuries, but not like this. I mean, they did lose their best player. So they lost... Uh, or their second best player in Nick Chubb. So I'm not even looking at the players that are out. These are players on injured reserve who are not playing. DTR, not very important. Uh, Deshaun Watson, starting quarterback, $250, $60 million guy. Nick Chubb, Grant Delpit. Dewan Jones starting right tackle, Jedrick Will starting left tackle, Maurice Hurst starting defensive tackle, uh, Rodney Rodney McLeod, Rodney McLeod, I think he was their starting sa- strong safety at the time of injury, uh, Jack Conklin who was the starter before Dewan Jones got hurt, um, Drew Forbes starting guard starting offensive guard, Jakeem Grant receiver four, Jacob Phillips starting receiver, um, and then they have right now they have Okaronk. Okoronkwo out, who has four and a half sacks on the season. Anthony Walker, starting linebackers out. Juan Thornhill's questionable. Marquise Goodwin's questionable. Dustin Hopkins, starting place kickers out. Out. So, all of these injuries, and they're still 10 and 5, second in the North, still competing for the one seed in the AFC. If this team is completely healthy to start the season, I think they're a top three team. I think they are, there's, you have a couple teams in the mix with the Ravens and the Dolphins and the Niners, and those are the only three teams that I think it's those four. If if this team is taking the healthy. Eagles out, yeah, and the Chiefs. Yeah, if this team's fully healthy, this team beats both those teams. So, my only issue with that is, 
I think Joe Flacco has provided this team, obviously with all the injuries, right, is tough, but he has provided this team a level of experience that Deshaun Watson was not bringing. I agree with everything except for the Deshaun part. But Unless, we haven't de- seen Desha- in Cleveland. We have not seen Deshaun healthy. His yeah, last, was he after not? He came back from his suspension. He was healthy and he sucked ass. And that was Russ. Was that was, was Russ. Still. Now after a complete off season, it's he's injured because he still sucks. Did he start I mean, the season injured? Yes. With what? Let me go look. I'm not disagreeing. I, I just know, I, I, I didn't. I, I I do not believe he started the season healthy. I think he had some off season injuries that he dealt with. Let me go find this. He had to he had to jerk it himself and he hurt his shoulder. Probably. Um, Couldn't get the massages anymore. I think if you put C.J. Stroud on the Browns, they're the best team in the league. In the league, I would agree. Currently, like right now, with or, Chubb. With okay, so September twenty fourth. So this is three weeks into the season. Okay, he had a uh, he tore his rotator cuff in his throwing arm. In his throwing arm, I think, and then on. The 22nd of October, less than a month later, he had a scapula fracture. And so we just, okay. So I'll give you, I'll give you that point. I don't disagree. I like that take. So that, like was, that, that take. was in his throwing arm in the middle of week three, returned week seven, re aggravated the shoulder in week seven, returned to play in week nine, played two more games, diagnosed with a fracture, shut down for the season. Who was he playing week three? The Titans. Titans. Oh, okay. That was. It seems like everybody gets hurt against the Steelers, but Nick Chubb was the one that got hurt against Pittsburgh. <laughs> I don't disagree. I mean, that's. So he hasn't been. He's he's played two healthy games, and they. What did they do in the first two weeks of the season? I honestly don't know. They beat the dog shit out of the Bengals week one, and yep. then week two was the Nick Chubb Tetris game. What does that mean? Don't say that. His knee turned into a Tetris block. That was the Steelers game week two. Lost yep. by four to the Steelers on the road. We're elite. I don't know. Uh, I don't. I don't disagree with that take. I like the Browns. I wish they would have kept Baker. I do too. I think they'd be great with Baker too. But I, I think that team. Because think about Baker was not signing no max contract, so you still have even more money to put into an already pretty much complete team. And I mean, you see what Baker's doing in Tampa Bay right now. I think that was probably. I think that is something the Browns are going to look back on if they don't get the production. That Deshaun. they expected out of Deshaun, I think that is something they will look back on. But I mean, we're seeing a team with all those injuries that you just listed, just guys that are out right now, not even guys on injured reserve, already, and they're ten and five. I said this last week. I think they're an AFC Championship contender for sure, especially with as bad as the Chiefs are playing. And they won't. They shouldn't face Baltimore. I don't believe. I want to see him. Face, I want to see him knock Baltimore out. I, they wouldn't play Baltimore until the AFC Championship, though, if I am not mistaken. The season ended yeah, right they now. Play, they would play Baltimore currently in, like, if they... It just depends on the matchups. If it neither of the other... Current, if the season ended today, they'd be the five seed. they played play Jacksonville, and then I think if... If neither of the other two wild cards win, they'd and go to Baltimore. Yeah, if Kansas City and the Dolphins won, they'd, they'd go to Baltimore. I think... I think they beat up on the Jags. Who would the Bills yeah. play right now? The Dolphins? The, the Chiefs. Chiefs. And the Chiefs would probably... Or the Bills would... Probably win. I think game. they're beating the Chiefs. And so then, in that case, the Bills would play the Ravens, and the Browns would play the winner, uh, or the Browns would play the Dolphins. I think they could beat the Dolphins. I, they would, I think they would destroy the Dolphins. AFC Championship because that is the that the Browns team on defense is built exactly what Tua cannot play against. Pressure, 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 pressure. They're Can you imagine in if, your face? And then Ravens, if the Bills, if the Bills beat the Ravens, I would love nothing <clears> more than to see. The Browns with Joe Flacco beat the Ravens. Beat the Ravens to go to the Super Bowl. To go to the Super Bowl. Well, if the Brown, if the Bills beat the Ravens in this hypothetical scenario, which is possible because I think the Bills are hot and the Ravens I think the are, Bills are also an AFC Championship. Then you get a Bills right Browns AFC Championship in which I believe the Browns could win that game. When was the last time that happened? Two wild card teams in the, in the, the AFC, AFC Championship. Good yeah. question. But this year it's volatile, and then you could see the Browns in the Super Bowl. Because I still don't think Miami is a true. Time, I still don't think Miami is a true contender. No, they so got lu- you, they got lucky that the Cowboys are a terrible road team, and literally just cannot figure it out. And they were beat all the way until a last second field goal as time expired. So I still don't see the eleven the Dolphins, and four uh, Dolphins. The, and the Dolphins were beating the Cowboys for the majority of that yeah, game. Yeah, was. But but the Dol- I mean the Cowboys. We talked about it last week. Three and four on the road going into that game. And can't defend the run. To continue to touch on the Browns really quick, and then we can move on. 
let's say they let's say this scenario plays out how we say. Okay. So the Browns make the Super Bowl. Yep. Eagles go on a run. I think they could beat the Eagles if they go on a run. 49ers, they already beat the Niners earlier in the season. They beat the Niners. That would be their toughest matchup in my be. opinion. Um, and then you got teams like who's the three seed right now? The Lions. The lot. They're beating the Lions. They're beating the Lions. Out of the Lions aren't making. What about, about, team? what about a Bucks Browns Super Bowl? Baker versus I the think, Browns. <laughs> I think the Browns. I think this year, out of all years, we could see crazy, something crazy. Crazy happen. Something Browns are my crazy. Browns are my dark horse right now. I would love to watch the Browns go on a run. I would love to see the. I all. my two teams that I will be rooting for in the AFC are the Browns and the Bills. Oh, mine are the Browns and but the Dolphins. Steelers, man. We got a chance. You got a chance, but I'm not. Rooting, <laughs> I'm not rooting for y'all. I would love to see the Dolphins win it all. To be honest, I think it'd be really. Yeah, I would love it. That team is just not good. I, it's good, but it's not. They just beat the Cowboys. That's a good win. A three and four. B- but both teams had yet. Somebody had to be the first one of the two to beat a team over 500. Them. And it was them. At I think home. I would love to at see them home. Win. I think it's a fun team to see win. I'd love I to see don't. Mike McDaniels. No no real true running back one. And they, like, Raheem Mostert is not a running back one in the NFL, but they make it work. I think it'd be super fun. He to only see. had 11 carries for 46 yards against the Cowboys. Did you see that Tony Pollard? Did you see that Tony Pollard clip? Did you see it? No. They're on like the three, oh, y- the, one the yeah, three yeah, yard line, and he, he had just the cuts down, and he, he decides, "No, I'm going to try to. I want to truck somebody. Before I want to cut in. back in and. Truck I want to make this a tough touchdown. Idiot. I personally am not a Dolphins fan in in any I'll sense be of the word. For the Dolphins with you. Yeah, I, like I think it'd be Dolphins. fun. Okay. I would rather, I would rather see the Bills or the Browns win it because I would like more than I would like. I want to see Tyreek win. Without Mahomes, I think it'd be cool. I mean, he's as long as it's not the Chiefs, I don't care. I just, I, I think two of the teams that would be the Browns to me would be the coolest team to watch win this year, in my opinion. And I think the Joe Flacco story would so be cool. absolutely incredible. Almost, almost ten years later, would it be ten years later? They won in two thousand twelve. Was it the year two thousand twelve or the season two thousand twelve? Two thousand twelve season. season. Okay, so over ten years later. I think it would be cool as hell. And then I'm a Josh Allen fan, and with all the struggles that that defense dealt with with injuries early in the season, and then they're like, oh, they fell apart. They've got nothing. They fire their offensive coordinator. Joe Brady comes in. That team is now 9-6. and 9-6 on a three-game win streak. I think they're probably going to win out. Um, I would love to see Josh Allen, especially in a year that the AFC is down, make his run at it. Um, those would be the two teams that I am rooting for. After that, I don't really care, to be honest. Dolphins, Ravens, as long as it's not the Chiefs, I don't care. Couldn't couldn't care less. Joe, what do you got for us on a hot take today? All right, well, my mid-moment kind of piggybacks, or my hot take kind of piggybacks off my mid-moment, but it includes another team. Neither the Chiefs nor the Eagles will make it out of the wild card round this season. Okay. Both teams have had their struggles. We already talked about the Chiefs' struggles. But the Eagles have struggles on both sides of the ball. On defense, they rank 28th in pass defense, last in third down stops, and 30th in red zone defense. They're not good. They got exposed by the Niners, and they haven't recovered since. <clears throat> I think if they get matched up with either the Cowboys or the Rams in the playoffs, because the Rams are a sneaky sneaky team, I think they could lose. What the fuck is up with this chair? Bro? <laughs> but... I would love to see Matt Stafford go into Philadelphia and upset the Rams. Cowboys, not so much, but they they already showed earlier in the season. They beat them once. They almost if Dak wouldn't have set out of bounds, they would have beat them twice. And as far as the Chiefs go, right now they're matched up with the Bills. If things go a certain way, I mean, obviously they can lose that one. They already lost it once. And then if flips standings flip for some reason, I think the Browns beat them straight up. Without a doubt. I would bet on the Browns. So there's a very good scenario. Neither one of the well, uh, Super Bowl teams from last season make it to the divisional round. And that's my hot take. Jalen Hurts has two passing touchdowns in his last four games. He has more rushing touchdowns than passing. And they're all toast yeah. pushes. They're all his season pushes. total on rushing yards is uh, his season total on rushing touchdown yards is thirty seven, I think. And he broke Cam Newton's record. I hated that too. I am not a Cam Newton fan. I'm not. But either. you cannot deny what Cam did on the football field, and that was. That was a record where I was like, "This is bullshit." The record, the ru- the rushing touchdown that Cam broke the record on was like forty nine yards. He broke. Yeah. He has more yards 
plus 10 yards on just his record-breaking run than Jalen Hurts on all of his rushing touchdowns. I hate that. Now, I will say, I don't want the league to ban that play because I think that's bullshit. I think defenses need to figure out how to stop. they got to figure out how to stop because well, every other team is, has been trying it, and they're not good the at it. The thing is, it's against the rules for the defense to get behind and push like the offense is. So if you're going to allow that, you need to bring that, take that rule out. Because the only way for the defense to really stop it is, is to get like the linebackers up on, up on those tackles, deep tackles and, and the kind of push them. Pushing. Then it turns into rugby. Yeah. I just think if it was such an unstoppable play, everybody in the league would be able to do it at such a high rate like the Eagles are. Nobody else has had the success that the Eagles have had with it. So I don't think it's fair to look at a team to look at a play that a team has perfected and go, oh, because you're really good at it, nobody can do it. I think that's a little little bit of BS, but... Like the uh, the overtime? Yeah. Playoff overtime? Yeah. Uh, but <laughs> moving on. We are going to go to our Dogs of the Week presented by Underdog. Use code FTS. You get your first deposit matched up to $100 and do it right now in time for NFL playoffs because that is some of the most fun times to play in college football fantasy. Playoffs. And college football playoffs. Yeah, they're coming up, you know, natty. And we're going to give you a couple couple guys. And uh, I think a couple of us have some college guys on our list this week. I think some sneaky dudes. me and Joe do for sure. So we're going to hop into this dog of the week. Make sure to check out Underdog, our dogs. All right, my dog of the week. This one's kind of easy for me. I'm not even going to lie. Romo Dunze, higher than 97 and a half receiving yards against Texas in the Sugar Bowl. Against teams number one wide receivers, any team that had a bona fide number one this year, Texas has been giving up at least 100 yards a game to these guys. I liked his receptions line. However, some of these guys that have played Texas have hit 105, 110, 120 receiving yards, but they have not on you know on four catches on five catches so I went with what I feel like is more of the safe pick here with the 97 and a half receiving yards I think this will be a high scoring game the over under right now is sitting at 66 I think is that I think it was like 66 and a half, and a half. Yeah, it was somewhere in the 60s half. I think both teams have all the ability in the world to put up 30 plus I think this will be a very high scoring game and I think it is going to be one of those games where the stars are out and the stars came to play. Romo Dunze is one of those stars in this game, so I'm going to take him higher than 97 and a half receiving yards. Lance Smith. All right. I don't have anything to base this pick off of. This is a feel pick. This is a gut pick. And that being said, it's a bit of a riskier pick, but I think <laughs> it plays out very well this weekend. The Ravens against the Dolphins, another high-powered matchup with some good offenses. I'm taking Lamar Jackson higher than half a rush plus receiving touchdown. I, like I think that. I think he gets in the end zone on like a seven-yard option touchdown run, um, and it's a scorcher on underdog. So that means you get 1.5 times your winnings when it hits, not if, but when. I've got Lamar getting a rush TD this weekend. I like that. I like that. Well, I'm sticking in the NFL this week. Um, I have a guy who should be, well, he's in the top three for MVP candidates. Christian McCaffrey, higher than 86 and a half rushing yards this week against the Commanders. Oh, the Commanders God. have had a very <laughs> difficult time against the run this year, and they've allowed over 100 yards to running backs four times. Christian McCaffrey is the best running back in the, in, in the NFL right now and has had over 100 yards in his last three games. Against solid teams and good teams, yeah. And now he gets the worst defense in the NFL, the thirty second worst defense, thirty so, second ranked defense in so, the NFL. Shit, I'm gonna tell you that one myself. Eighty six, <laughs> yeah, I need eighty six and a half rushing yards. <laughs> Higher, Joseph. What do you got? I'm going back to college football. Same game, actually. I'm taking Mr. Quinn Ewers. His projection is higher, or what I'm picking is higher than two hundred eighty eight and a half passing yards. I know it sounds like a lot. It's Oklahoma State. He put up 452 with Bo Teddies. Didn't do too great against Texas Tech, but didn't, he didn't play most of that game. Yeah. But this that was a route. The over under for this game 
We said 66 and a half correction. It's 23 and a half. I was wrong on that. But even so, 63 63 and a half. 63 and a half. Okay. Yeah. That was about 20. (laughs) But if you do the math, that means Texas is going to have to score at least 32 points. And if they're scoring 32 points, I like my chances that Quinn Ewers is going to be putting up at least 300 yards. So 288 and a half, easy money. Higher. Just to let you guys know, three of our four picks (laughs) did indeed do what they were supposed to do this past week. So ours hit straight up. His pushed. Jordan Love is the only one that didn't. Yeah, the fuck up. You're playing the Panthers, you bum. Yeah, and, and they put up 30, and yards? they put up 33 points. He took his passing yards, right? Mm-hmm. Yes. Yeah, they put up 33. He didn't go higher than the 230 something that he put up like 220. What a yeah. bum. What a bum. But those are the dogs of the week presented by an underdog. Use code FTS. Get your first deposit matched up to a hundred dollars and get in on the fantasy fun. For the end of the season, some of the best football you're going to get to watch all year with the NFL playoffs coming up and bowl games. So get started now with that code, right? I mean, that's free money. Who doesn't like free money? And you better take these picks now because our NBA picks are going to be worse than this. Yeah. yeah. So, so you're <laughs> so not going to love the You NBA might as well take the money while yeah, you can you, get it. You might as well take what we're giving you now because the NBA is. Uh, we're. Uh, we did pretty well in the playoffs, so I'm not going to lie. The playoffs, but we got a long way till we yeah. get to the NBA playoffs. You're going to have about four months of just L's. Maybe they will, maybe they won't. Um, but yes, that is the Dogs of the Week. And that kind of wraps it up for us. Anybody got anything to add? Steelers are winning the Super Bowl this year. As long as they start Rudolph. I don't think I have anything. Lance? Likewise. Georgia's going to beat Florida State by 35 points. The... the we're 19 point favorites yeah, right now. I was going to say, the, we are 19. It's moved from 13 and a half to 19 in the last four days. And before the game on Saturday, I do have a feeling that it will move to 21 and a half, is my guess. Yeah. I, they, I, I mean, wouldn't be surprised to see a 23 and a no half. No starter, no starting quarterback, no backup quarterback, no starting running back, no backup running back, no top three receivers. No, they don't have two. They're, they're, running no back Jared one and, they're running back one and running back two are wide receivers on the depth chart right now. Um, no starting tight end, no backup tight end, out Jared Verse, out a couple other guys. It's gonna be and and Georgia. I don't. It, I I there. I haven't seen a single opt out from Georgia. And Brock Bowers has made the trip to Miami. If he plays, dude, we might beat him by forty. I think it's gonna be like a like a fifty-two to ten statement game. Kirby is gonna have them dogs fired up. All right, that is gonna do it for us this week. We hope you guys had a great Christmas. We hope you guys enjoy New Year's. Be safe. Enjoy your time with friends and family. This will be out tomorrow morning, Joe? Yeah. Tomorrow morning, so Friday morning. Again, we're just out a day late because of the holidays. We hope you enjoyed this episode, our second episode in the studio. So we're still kind of getting getting rolling here and, and you know, kind of figuring it all out. But it's coming together well. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Check us out on YouTube, TikTok, Facebook, Instagram. All that hot jazz. (laughs) We will see you next week.